I know I said I wasn't going to do another unboxing video for a while, but I just got the most amazing £60 mystery box from the Spider Shop, and I just have to show you guys what's in it. Roll the intro. Hello everybody, welcome to this latest episode. I am your host Robbie, and this is Robbie's Talking Tees. Tarantula content for tarantula lovers, just like yourself. If you've been here before, I wanna say a huge thank you for coming back, it really helps out the channel. And if you're new here, and you want more tarantula content in your feed, please consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss future uploads. <laughs> Now that's out of the way, let's talk about today's video. I ordered the GIMP mystery box from the Spider Shop. It was just 60 pounds and inside contains what they call GIMP spiders. Some of them have got missing limbs, but as you know with tarantulas, give it a molt or two and it will be back to normal. So let's jump in and see what's in this amazing mystery box, shall we? Let's go! So here we have it, 60 pounds from the spider shop, the GIMP mystery box. I know what's in it. Let's open it up and show you guys exactly what we've got in there. Now I am excited about this because I think once you guys uh, see what's in it, you will be blown away and want to go out and Order one yourselves. So let's crack this open. I know there's eight in here in total, unless they've thrown in some freebies, which I don't know about. Oops, not the camera there. So here we have it the typical spider shop stuff. From out of Palma China pubescence. Also, I think that's Flamingo Kyla species Rufus. I'm pretty certain on it. But let's open this up. We have Subadult S. Calciatum. Now I've already got one of these that I rehoused recently, which ran up my back, up my neck across my face and then sat on the top of my head and then jumped off into the uh, empty substrate box that I had in front of me. Well, it had substrate in it, but I was just used it to do the rehousing. And there it sat and then I catch cupped it and put it in a new enclosure. Next up, we have Gramostola Pulchra, two centimeters. So that alone is worth more than the 60 pounds that I paid for the box. Next up, we have Avicularia species Peru purple. Awesome species. Next up, we have got Pteranoculus lugardi, one centimetre. Bearing in mind these are all gimps, they're going to have legs missing, or maybe pedipalps missing, but they're perfectly healthy other than that. So, so far this is worth well over £60. Next up, we have got T. violaceus. 
Tapenokinius violaceus. Now that wasn't on the list that I was sent, so that's unexpected. What else have we got in there? Brachypelma albiceps, one centimeter. This is going to be the third one of these that I've received over the past couple of months. I've got a juvenile female that I got from Mark Allison and also uh, another tiny little juvenile. So to have a third one of these, absolutely awesome. Next up, Syriopagopus species Hattie Hattie, one to two centimeters. That's awesome. Do love a Hattie Hattie. Angry little things they are. What have we got here? Lacidora parabiana, five to seven centimeters. Everyone loves LPs. I've already got two, but a third one won't hurt, will it? Next up, a one centimetre Lacidora parabiana. So I've got two LPs. I'm turning into Kieran now. What else do we, we have in here, if anything? I think that's it. I was expecting, oh no, there's another one. The one I was just about to say I was expecting. Pistotheria metallica, two to three centimeters. That is the one that I really wanted. I've already got an adult female and a juvenile Metallica. But to get another one in here is absolutely fantastic. I can't get enough of this species. So how many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten teas in one box. All gimps for £60. So should we get into the rehousing of these? I think so. So the first one I am going to rehouse is the larger of the Lacidora Parabiana. This is it's five to seven centimeters. I'm guessing, looking at the little toes up there, it's going to be closer to the five centimeter mark. And these guys do get pretty big. If you watch Tom Moran's videos, he says they normally get about eight to nine inches, but some have been known to get bigger. I think as soon as I open this lid, it's going to want to come running out. So what I'm going to do, pop open the lid like this. See, there's his little toes. It wants to stretch out. This is going to be awkward because obviously I don't want to Squish the little guy or girl. But I do want to get the tissue out. And of course it's going to rip into tiny little pieces. There you go. Go on. There you go. You practically rehouse yourself. Now... Can already see what's the matter with it as you can see he's missing a back leg so hopefully with its next molt that leg will grow back and this will be a perfectly happy and healthy spider that's going to be the problem with all of the ones that you see today in the rehousing they are going to be missing legs and stuff like that which is why it's the gimp box. But now that's over, let's move into the next rehousing. So the next one we're gonna do Brachypelma albiceps. What I'm hopefully gonna do is I'm gonna try and get them in the enclosures and then zoom in so you can have a have a good look at, at the spider. Even though they are really tiny, this one says one centimeter you can never tell with the spider shop as brilliant as they are she's 
take this out, being very careful not to squash the spood. I know a lot of people hate it when people say spoods, I just can't help it. It's become habit now. Mm, it's teeny, teeny, tiny. You know what? That's so tiny. And it's missing legs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the substrate out of here, place it in this vial. I know I'm being a bit messy. Let's pack it down. Let's give it a bit more so it can burrow if it wants to. All right, calm down. Fun part of uh, keeping teas when it gets really messy. It is in my finger. Let's get the vial just behind. Oh, no, mate. In you go. Go on. As you can see, it's missing some legs. Missing two legs, two at the front on the right hand side. But it's getting around all right. Give it a couple of malts and it will be back to full health. Just leave it to get settled in there. So I'm guessing one let's get that out of the way because I use some of the substrate I don't want to go and fill it up again next one we're going to do is G Polkra let's get this open now I've already got a, a juvenile one of these which is starting to show the black coloration I was so excited when it molted out definitely a great beginner species as well for all of those new to the hobby. I'm hoping this one's a little bit bigger than the one we just had. But we shall see. Yeah, it looks it. No. Yeah, again, missing legs. Missing a leg. But as you can see, it's getting around just fine. In fact, uh, yeah, you can see it's missing its back, back leg on the right hand side. But again, Another malt. Sorry, mate. Another malt, and this will be back to its best. For sixty pounds, you can't go wrong with this box. How many people are after Gramostola Polkrits and they think, "Oh, that's so expensive," and I just got this in a sixty-pound, sixty-pound mystery box. But for now. You're gonna go into your new enclosure. Now, boop in there. And that is where you are going to gonna live until you molt a couple of times and we put you in a bigger one. Alright, so let's get into the next one. Gonna have to label these up afterwards as well. So, Terranoculus lugardi. Let's get this one out. Cool. 
this also says one to two centimeters on it but it's a lot more closer to one centimeter so before I get it out we're just gonna prepare the vial because it's going back in there getting substrate everywhere that is the greatest part about this hobby getting down and dirty with nature let's get that out of the way let's show you the show you the spood Okay, calm down. Again, just missing, missing the one leg on the right hand side, but otherwise perfectly fine and healthy spood. These are so gorgeous when they get bigger. Again, I've got another one of these that's a there's a juvenile. See the colours on it already. I won't have to rehouse this for a, a couple of months. And I don't have to label it either. So that's always handy. It's a Pteranoculus Ligardi. Last of the uh, terrestrials, another LP at one centimeter. I'm guessing this is going to be tiny again, so I will probably have to rehouse it back in here. Let's just get the tweezers. Breaking off. Now these are always tiny, tiny, tiny slings. Substrate in there, just in case. Doesn't need much, even though it will probably burrow down into that and you won't see it for a little while let's open this up and see what we're dealing with oh yeah that's absolutely tiny that is smaller than small look at that it's amazing to think that this is going to become an eight or nine inch tarantula when it grows up Again, just missing one leg. Oh. In you go. See it? That's Adora Parabiana. Rehoused. Now let's move on, shall we? To the arboreals so let's move on to the arboreals shall we first one we're going to start off with is Syriopagopus species Hattie Hattie now these I've already pre-set up it's just a little tub that you get from Tesco's they're about £2.50 each I believe a little bit of cork bark and a little bit of substrate it's all it's going to need at this small size. Now this says it's one to two centimeters. Now these are pretty fast growing. I've already got a sub-adult female that I rehoused the other day, which was really well behaved, funny enough. So all we're going to do, same as last time, take it. Pull out 
tissue. I'm going to try and show you the T. Try being the operative word. Look at it, it's absolutely teeny tiny. One to two centimeters was deadly accurate. It's amazing how something so small can grow up to be so large. There it is. gorgeous when they get bigger so what we're going to do just going to nudge it onto its cold bark and there it is sitting there happy as Larry in its new enclosure Let's give you guys a better view if it doesn't... Oh, it darted off. That was to be expected. But anyway, let's move on to the next one. So, the next one we're going to do... Tapinachemius violaceus. Now, these are super, super, super bolty. I've had a couple of these now. Okay. Sorry, there's people outside making noise. I'm sorry if you can hear them. There's building work going on. Let's see how tiny this one is. These are really bolty. I know I just said that, but I don't. Unless you've got one, I don't think you will understand the speed at which these fly around. And this again is super, super, super tiny. I actually think too small for this enclosure. That's what I did with the other ones. A bit of substrate in its original pot. Into the vial, and that will burrow away. And then, once it's had a couple of malts, I will stick it into what I was going to stick it in. So, there it is Tapnachemius violaceus. So we can reuse this one. Two centimetre avicularia peru purple. I've got an avic avic and avicularia purpurea, also avicularia quitara. So we're actually building up quite a collection of avicularia. Obviously got carabina versicolor which used to be an avic and carabina laeta which I'm guessing would have been an avic as well don't quote me on that but this is apparently two centimeters so should oh look at that 
That is one thing I love about Avix, how cute they are when they're tiny. How gorgeous is that, even though it's missing a leg? Webbing up, it's doing a happy dance without even eating. <laughs> That is strange to see. Anyway, sorry mate, sorry to disturb you. We need to stick you in your new enclosure. Off your boop. There you go. And there it is, camouflaged against the cook bar. Can't wait to give you updates on all these spiders, as they are gimps. But let's move on to the final one, shall we? So finally, out of the slings that we received, slings and juveniles, we have got my favourite piece, Lefiria. Piece Lefiria Metallica. Now this is the third one I've got of these now. I've got a adult female that I got at the Brighton Show, which obviously Petco, the dark den, named Maya for me, which was awesome. And I've also got a very small juvenile, which has recently molted. That's about three to four centimetres now. This one says two to three centimetres. So it's going to have a good bit of size on it. I should imagine. Now obviously I don't advocate using your hands for pokies. But at this size they're not too terrible. Not too terrible. I've had a couple run out onto me before. And they just seem to sit there. Although these are very, very bolty at this size. So let's give you a quick, quick look at it. Autofocus going there a bit. There's a better shot. I think you'll agree that this box so far, for just £60, has been absolutely fantastic. Losing autofocus there. But, I'm going to get this in the new enclosure. So here we go, hopefully it just goes straight down into that piece of cork bark there. Yeah, there you go, lovely, absolutely fantastic. Right, now let's get on to the big sub-adult, shall we? So here we have it, last but not least. Subadult Stromatopelma calciatum. Now the last one I had of these, the rehouse didn't go too well. It was in this enclosure, and I was taking it out to put it into a new glass enclosure. And what happened was, is it bolted straight out, up my back, up my neck, across my face, and then sat on my head. And I had the substrate that I keep in a in a box in front of me and it jumped off my head and into the substrate so I'm expecting this one to be just as bolty but hopefully what I'll be able to do is take it out 
of here, get it either into the catch cup, place it on the floor, and it won't be too bolty, and I'll be able to give you guys a really good look at it, because the, the coloration on these is awesome. And hopefully I'll be able to catch cup it again and stick it into this enclosure. Now this is only a basic, basic enclosure, just a little bit of substrate, some cork bark for it to hide behind. Because eventually what I'll do is I'll get it a glass enclosure and then pull it on the other shelves. Which I'll be showing you in a future video because my tea room is uh, coming to the point of near completion. I won't say complete completion because there's any room ever really complete. But I will be doing a video to show you my whole setup and how things are around here. I can see it. This is not going to be fun. I'm not here. Maybe my original plan isn't going to be a good one. It's what these like to do is they like to lay dormant and then come bolting out. So what I may have to do is reset up and rehouse it inside the enclosure so let's try this again shall we if it is inside there so what we can do place it inside like so and this was Silly, only bought one set of tongues with me. And of course, this is packed in really, really tight. Okay, there's no bottom. I can't tell if that's its butt facing me. Or it's front. This was stupid not having two pairs of tongs. Oh. Okay. And of course, this is really, really, really well packed. Right, there's its butt facing me. Look at the colours. It is missing a leg. I'm not done. I'm going to get the catch cup ready just in case. How gorgeous is that?
also going to get the lid to the enclosure because these guys like to run up straight up It's up. <laughs> it's up and out. And it's run under the sofa. That was awesome. <laughs> So, I'm guessing you're all wondering what happened next after that Stromatopelma calciatum ran under the sofa. Well, let me tell you, I stopped filming, I got underneath the sofa, looked around the sofa, pulled it out wasn't there, it was vanished, it was like a ninja. One second it was there, next minute it was gone. Now I knew these guys were fast, but I didn't know they was that fast. So then I went through the entire tea room, pulled everything out. I'm talking enclosures, shelving, everything got pulled out. There was no sign of the tarantula at all. This search went on, the tea escaped at 11.50 in the morning. I didn't leave the tea room till about 6 or 7 p.m. Still no sign of it. So Annie from Annie's Arachnids was left here by herself with a roaming tarantula in the place. Later on that night, around 9 30 10 o'clock p.m we got our first sighting it was down in a little cubicle on one of the shelving units that all the tea enclosures are on she tried to catch it it bolted went behind the unit couldn't find it again then about 30 minutes later it reappeared she slowly moved the enclosure, tried to get it out and coax it into an enclosure. No luck. It bolted again. Wasn't seen again for the rest of the night. So the next day, came round early in the morning, about 6 a.m., half past six. I had work. I started work at eight o'clock, but I'm working luckily enough just around the corner. Searched the flat again no sign of it no sign whatsoever it vanished disappeared could not find it tore everything apart pulled everything out again nothing then later on that night I came back here after work a couple of hours searching again nothing 10 o'clock hits I get the message and he's arachnids had found it sitting on the wall just behind the enclosures like you see in the photo. She sprung into action, grabbed the catch cup. About 30 minutes later, I received this image. She had caught it. I was so happy. The next morning I came round, grabbed an enclosure, and managed to rehouse it in this temporary enclosure. It's in there, it's webbed up, it has eaten, but I'm not looking forward to putting it in its permanent enclosure because that is potentially another rehouse that could go wrong. But the moral of the story is I made the mistake, I allowed it to bolt out and have a really fast, bolty, venomous tarantula 
on the loose in the tea room. So be careful when you're rehousing guys. You don't want that to happen. That was my mistake. I won't do it again, especially for the purpose of a YouTube video. But now all that's out of the way and we've got to the end of the saga, let's tell you about 600 and 1,000 subscriber giveaway. Now at 600 subscribers, we're now on 551, so we are ever edging closer to that giveaway. I am giving you the chance to win a Raggy Tees t-shirt, a Robbie's Talking Tees t-shirt, and also a little three centimeter Nandu Chromata sling. That's not enough. 1,000 subscribers, I'm gonna be giving you the chance to win Juvenile Chromatopelma China Pubescence sent to you from the spider shop. So there's two good, good, good reasons to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss the content in the future and you'll be automatically entered into that giveaway. Now this has been a long video, 40 minutes. If you've made it this far, you are awesome. I will see you in the next Robbie's Talking Tees video.